Hello everyone and welcome to today's uh, Planet Coaster Odyssey in which we are very, we are getting very close to the end of the series actually. I'm just looking at the uh, the remaining footage folder on my PC and it's it's getting thin. Uh, I think it's just going to be this episode and one more episode after this and then we'll kind of do a, an overview series and that's the park finished. So um, I don't want to get I don't, I don't want to be tearing up but this has been a, a real dare I say roller coaster of a <laughs> of a series. Um, but introductions aside, not that that was really an introduction, more of just a, a weird thought I've just had. Um, I should probably introduce this video. <laughs> this is obviously an episode of Planet Coaster, that has been introduced. But in this episode of Planet Coaster, we're going to be adding a train station to the hotel complex of Crimson Tower. So it's a purely uh, cosmetic thing. The hotel itself is just a big empty shell of a building. It's just there to kind of, you know, make the park look a little bit more realistic. So this station won't actually be used by any of the guests like in the game, unless when you download this park file, which will be available soon, <laughs> as I just said, this series is coming to an end. And then by all means, you can open up the park, uh, open up this station, and you know, build, build things around the hotel, or even you know, try and add stalls and things inside it, so it's actually sort of acts as a functional, uh, you know, commercial building. <laughs> I don't know, but this is just a purely aesthetic thing, at least for my version of the save file. And I think it's just, it's just a nice thing to include, fills up some of the empty space at the edge rather than just, you know, adding a forest, which is what I generally do at the edges of parks to make them seem, like, fleshed out at the edges. Um, but yes, it's a big, big station connecting it to the hotel, so it was a challenge in a way to try and make a uh, station that kind of fitted with the aesthetic of the hotel, but also kind of made it very obviously look like a station. I'm not very good at picking, I mean... I feel like I, my buildings are okay, but I always I always struggle with coming up with kind of ideas for buildings. Like you're watching this now, this is probably the third attempt at building a station I was happy with. I'll build a station for like two hours and then just decide I hate it and delete it and then, you know, delete the footage and then start something else. So I, I, I'm happy with the way it came out in the end, but it was quite a challenge. I, I'm not very good at building like things to a restricted style. Usually I'll come up with a building idea and then build that building. If I then have to build something else, to match that building's style, if that makes sense, then I struggle. It's just, that was the problem I had with the sci-fi area of the park, actually. Like, I can build, like, one sci-fi station or something, and then it was, I found it hard to try and think of new ways to make sci-fi, scen like, scenery that looks like it's futuristic for other buildings as well. But I, I think this came out well. I especially like this bridge, actually. I tended to, um, I looked a lot at the, uh, the, the, oh, is it the Florence Hotel in Las Vegas? Uh, the Las Vegas hotels are actually quite good things to uh, use as muses for Planet Coaster because they're so artificial and over the top and they, like, cram loads of different types of scenery all into one small space. You can kind of see uh, good uses of, um, you know, <laughs> theming to create a certain vibe or aesthetic. Um, and that's what I kind of so I kind of looked at the bridge for the Florence Hotel in Vegas. In the end, I didn't uh, do that style, but that was something I considered. So if you if you want it, if you were stumped for ideas as well, um, but yeah, this we kind of got this sort of concrete bridge just to get ourselves over the roller coaster track. That was another thing that was a bit of a challenge, getting the path from the station to the hotel. I could have like incorporated the station kind of so it was like within the hotel's grid, if that makes sense, but. I think this looks a little bit better and a bit more realistic in the w in a way to have the the station be its own sort of separate entity. But yes, as I was saying, it was a challenge coming up with a way of connecting the station paths to the hotel because, as I've mentioned time and time again in this series, the path tool in Planet Coaster is not very good. It's very uh, hard to make accurate paths. Uh, so it was kind of a bit it was a bit janky. So I, and then I had to kind of dress the path up in this uh, you know solid angular uh, brick wall you can kind of see it does that it has like a weird slope going down to the station itself that i couldn't really find a way to get rid of that so i think from a distance it looks good unfortunately if you do zoom in on closer inspection it does start to have, be a little bit rough around the edges but overall i think it came out pretty well so that was kind of the main two challenges of this station building really a make it look like a station uh, but also have it fit with the style of the hotel and also just trying to make a nice path that connects it up to the hotel complex. That's what I worked on first. And I think we did a pretty nice job with the bridge and kind of, it's a fairly nice path thing, I think. And now at this point, I would realize that the monorail station is quite high off the ground. I did experiment with building just a building that was that high, but it looked a bit weird having it so tall. So I kind of just raised, I've just terraformed some of this ground around it so that it's not quite so high up. And this station, as I said, is mainly, it's just there as a cosmetic thing to serve what would be the hotel station. So it's not actually accessible from anywhere else in the park. It's just there for hotel guests. They can come out of the hotel in the morning, get the train to the front entrance of the park, 
and that that that's how the station works so yes i hope you i hope you enjoy the way this i hope you're enjoying the way this came out i actually i liked it but i think that's really enough of me talking about the footage i think it's gonna be quite a boring video if all i do is talk specifically about what's going on on the screen so maybe i'll talk about some of the things that have been going on in my in my life in general which is what i what i originally planned for these planet coaster commentaries but it seems to have just been an amalgamation of just rambling about nothing to do with the game or just like talking about kerbal space program it seems Although, speaking of Kerbal Space Program, guess who's got the DLC now? It's me. Hello. Hi, I'm Matt Lown. They gave me the DLC yesterday, so I've been playing around with that. I'm allowed to make videos of it. I don't know if I'm allowed to um, be saying this now. I think I can. I think I can. Uh, tomorrow, when you guys are watching this, it'll be tomorrow, is the embargo date. So as soon as I'm finished recording this commentary, I need to go away and, you know, have a look at... I haven't actually played it, played with it yet. I played it initially a while... I got the... I got a, I got like a beta for it, like a very alpha -y version of it a while ago. I didn't really use it very much because I did... I could, it was very... I had to go through some very convoluted means of getting it working because of all the security protocols that take to impose... On. I don't know if I can talk too much about it, but it was, it was very difficult for me to get that game, have that game and play it easily. Uh, there was a lot of security things I had to go through every time I wanted to fire it up. So in the end, I just sort of stopped bothering... <laughs> But maybe I'll have to, I'll just pop into the uh, the creator's chat and just see what everyone else has done and copy them. Um, because why, <laughs> I won't do that, but I, I don't I don't know. Is, is there anything in particular you guys want to hear about the DLC in general that you want me to cover in Thursday's video? It's probably too late at this point because I will have hopefully have, have the video ready at this point. I think I'm going to do a Saturn V recreation because that's kind of one of the big things they're adding to the pack is, you know, the, the Saturn V parts, the Apollo lander, all of that. So I'll make a Saturn V recreation as well as a general overall summary. Although I'm not yet allowed to talk about the actual making history missions because those are still being worked on. But everything else, like the new parts, mission builder, they're fair game. I can talk about those. Anyway, so that's the Kerbal Space Program part of this uh, video over. <laughs> let's not re let's not retread that uh, territory. Uh, but yes, um, everything else, it's been pretty stressful actually recently in my life because um, I've been doing this exam. I'm, I'm, at, I'm at university. Like I'm not a student. Well, I guess technically I'm a student, but I have a full-time job. But I'm currently also doing like a course at the university, uh, City University London School of Optometry. Uh, I'm getting like a certification in medical retina. So it lets me basically do... I mean, these are clinics that traditionally would have been done by consultants or, you know, registrar doctors. But um, the NHS is very poor, so they're getting mugs like me <laughs> to um, to do these clinics as well. So it's kind of like diabetic retinopathy. Uh, if uh, These might be like sound meaningless, but I'm guessing some people in the comments might have family members or they might have it themselves and they recognize the names of the conditions. So things like diabetic retinopathy, age-related macular degeneration, those sorts of clinics, um, lucentis injections. That's kind of what I'll be doing, but it's, it's a lot of work. Um, as, as it turns out, you have to do quite a lot of work to... Um, be able to give out um, ilea and lucentis injections into people's eyeballs. Who'd have thought? You'd think it'd be quite a straightforward topic, really, but there you go. So that's been eating up pretty much all of my free time that isn't spent making videos. So I haven't really had that much interesting happen to me outside of playing Kerbal Space Program. And I feel like as much as I like, to, I would like to talk about eyes and things, I feel like it's probably not the most relatable topic. Although, this being said, I had a great idea for a new series... Because Kerbal Space Program is going to die eventually, and I've seen Scott Manley have great success in making kind of space videos and just science videos. Uh, so I'm just going to um, re-upload all of his videos, and that will be really good for me. Uh, that was a little joke. Um, it wasn't very funny on reflection, but these videos aren't scripted, and we don't do retakes, so we're going to move swiftly on. No, I'm going to try and do something similar. Not so much similar to Scott Manley, but I found a channel called Chubby Emu. It's amazing. It was on Reddit. It was on the front page of Reddit like a week ago or like a few weeks ago. It's basically, he's I think he's a doctor, basically talking about interesting medical cases. Like the videos are called things like, I don't know, um, uh, a man didn't brush his teeth for 40 days. This is how his kidneys shut down. And he just breaks it down. It's a really nice video. They're all about 10 minutes long. They're really good. It's like a really dark, twisted version of Vsauce. I love it. It's great. Anyway, I was thinking about doing something like that because especially with space, because this is how I tie it to space travel, right? Do you want to go to space? Do you want to go to Mars? Because if you do, there's a pretty good chance you'll go blind unless we figure out some pretty basic stuff. And like a lot of astronauts, uh, for those of you that don't know, astronauts have to have something called 2020 vision. Uh, in the UK, it's 6-6 because we use the metric system and, you know, everywhere else that isn't America. But 2020 seems to have stuck stuck around because of America being the influential Leviathan it is. But yeah, astronauts need to have 2020 vision. What 2020 means is that... Um, 
you have normal, like that 2020 vision means normal vision. So at 20 feet, you would see what a normal person sees at 20 feet. So that's 2020. If you have poorer vision, like 2040, you see what a normal person would see at 40 feet at 20 feet, if that makes I hope that makes it, I hope that clarifies what 2020 means. That's probably, a, it's not a great explanation and it's, it is simplifying it a little bit, but that's pretty much the layman's explanation. And that's why in UK it's 6'6", six, because six, it's six meters, not 20 feet. That's about the same. Same distance. Um, anyway, yes, I'm, I'm thinking about doing something like that. So astronauts need to have 2020 vision to go to space. But a lot of them have come back from the International Space Station and suddenly need glasses and found their visions deteriorated. And that's because of a phenomenon called visual impairment. Well, I, I think there's like an actual term for the one that astronauts have, which I've completely forgotten. It's VIP, I think, or something. It's basically a vision loss due to increased pressure inside the eye and the head. Um, so the pressure inside the eye has increased and the pressure inside the head has increased, which can cause a multitude of problems. And I could drag, drag over many videos kind of saying you know, how why your eye muscles might stop working because the sixth nerve controls the lateral rectus muscle of the eye and a bit of increased pressure squashes it against the petrous tip of the temporal bone in the skull and it knocks out your ability to move your eyes to the side. There's so It's a real gold mine that I think I've discovered. By, <laughs> so I'd like to see some videos on that, although the actual astronaut side of things, it's a very niche condition that they don't actually teach you at university about that specific side of things. So I've been swatting up on some textbooks and uh, YouTube video, like not YouTube videos, but you know, lectures at NASA, which have like a hundred views. And I was like, this is a really interesting lecture. It's like two hours long and it covers everything. So I've been making notes of those and I would like to do it at some point. Uh, I would like to do that video justice though. And at the moment, most of my revision around eyes is this medical retina stuff. So when that's done, I'll be able to do, uh, so it might, it might be kind of after my medical retina exams, which are in April. So maybe after April, I'll set an, an estimate time of arrival for those, for that little mini series or video i haven't really depending on the reaction of the first one really everything else um so that was that's one thing that's been i've been thinking about i was going to do a review of the mod mic 5 the ant lion sent me one to review um uh, i i've enjoyed it. i've been using it i want to I, I did say to them i want to use it for about a month to kind of get a feel for it and give it a fair review so i have been using it when I'm playing, obviously I'm using a Blue Yeti right now to record this commentary, but I've done like a comparison of it to a Blue Snowball, Blue Yeti webcam mic just to kind of give an audio quality um, demonstration. But yeah, I'm going to do kind of use it a bit longer and then give it a kind of a fair review, but it's good. I really like it. If you want a too long, didn't read, uh, too long, didn't watch or didn't want to wait, uh, then it's a good microphone. It sounds very good. It sounds pretty comparable to a Blue Snowball in terms of quality. The Blue Yeti is better but the Blue Yeti is more expensive, so you would expect it to sound a little bit worse than the Blue Yeti. And also, Blue Yeti, don't forget, is a massive desktop microphone, whereas this is just a very small um, kind of, you know, uh, what's it called? Headset microphone. So, yeah, uh, for those that don't know, the Mon mic is like a... Um, headsets, in general, are a bit of a scam because the microphone quality is bad and the sound quality is bad. And they're just bad. Uh, so the Mod mic lets you basically just add a headset microphone to any headphones that you already have, and it's magnetic and it's really cool. So that's what the mic is. So I've been, I've been enjoying it so far. I've got that stock on my Audio Technicas, so it's great. Anyway, let's talk about the footage. <laughs> so at the moment, this kind of like raised uh, tabletop mountain, not really a mountain hill, <laughs> has it's only got the roller coaster at the moment. And it's got the monorail station, I guess, but since it's not connected to the park and doesn't actually serve function, at least for my version of this save, I wanted to have a few more things to give reasons for like guests to come up this far. So we've just added a couple of rides. We've got a nice... Um, what's it called, Ferris wheel, which isn't in shot at the moment. But I thought the Ferris wheel would be quite a good thing to put up here because it's quite high up, so you've got a good vantage point anyway. And then as you get to the top of the wheel, you get a nice, a beautiful panoramic view of the whole park because the tower, you can't actually climb up because the tower, I didn't, I, I for some reason I had it in my head that elevators were in this game because they were in the games, they were in all the roller coaster tycoons. So I was like, I'll just put an elevator in the middle of the tower. Uh, and then it turned out that actually, no, they're not in this game. So maybe one day I'll make a uh, follow-up to this series where we put an elevator inside the Crimson Tower, but I don't know, it's, it's sound, it just serves as a nice sort of visual thing anyway. I kind of have a backstory to the park where the owners purchased the land that had the tower in it, but it was deemed too unsafe to reopen, so it's just kind of a, a, a monument. It's a listed building. <laughs> okay, so now we're just going to add some nature. Nature's just a really quick way of making the park look a little bit more realistic and nicer overall. And if you want to like make bushes, obviously there are bushes in the game, but also you can kind of take a big oak tree or something and just sink it into the ground to make it look like it's just a hedge. Little trick. And then you might have seen me there just covering up, making some slightly better supports for that 
uh, ramp path. But uh, yeah, that's um, that's the top part of the park all done. So in the final episode, I'm pretty sure it's going to be the final episode. We're going to be building one last roller coaster, just because I feel like it would be quite a, a weird way to end the series, just building a station. We want to build it on a somewhat momentous occasion. I'll just uh, whack a POV on here so you can kind of see a little tour of what we just built from the thrilling seat of a roller coaster. Um, yeah, we're going to be building a roller coaster in the next uh, video. We'll also do the other monorail station that needs doing. And that's pretty much it. So I, I do hope you've enjoyed this ride, although it's not over just yet. But this video is certainly wrapping up, so I better just talk about some of the things I need to talk about at the end of videos. If you want to join my Discord, you can do so. There is a link in the description. And if you want to keep up with what's occurred in the, the world of Matt Laun, then you can follow me on Twitter. I post lots of spicy memes and updates on there, as well as things like polls to kind of get user feedback, things like that. I also have a Patreon, uh, which you can throw your money away and uh, give me money on that if you would like to continue to help supporting this channel. Uh, it's actually been quite helpful with the Patreon money. It's allowed me to buy things like hard drives, just, you know, generally keep, help things run a little bit smoother. But on screen is a link to the full Crimson Tower playlist if you want to see any of the other videos, as well as a link to subscribe to my channel, because then you will get notified of uh, when the playlist gets updated. And that's, that's the end of the video. Thank you for watching.